Hi, I'm going to talk a little bit about Saxon math books. This is one of the first questions you have to answer when you start Robinson Curriculum. Where do I get my math book? And what edition do I use? Because there's more than one and it just leads to a lot of questions. And apparently there's some controversy over it because some of us uh, feel very strongly on both sides which way to go. So I'm going to present this information as unbiased as I can. Um, no, I'm not. You've already seen the other side. I'm going to present my side. <laughs> Whatever. Make your mind up for yourself. Uh, there's a clear difference between the books and a reason that these issues keep coming up. Okay. When I first ordered my book, I decided to go with the third edition from Robinson Curriculum because I really like RC and I wanted to support them. And this is what we got. We got this very pretty brand new book, third edition, copyright 2004, and a corresponding answer key. Okay, we're going to look at some of the book for just a second. I'll show you what happened as we started working on this. I'll just look at lesson one. First thing you find on every lesson in this third edition is this little warm-up box. And so, first off, you have to answer another question. What do I do with this? Am I supposed to do this? It's really written for a classroom of students and the consensus on the forums, and I believe Robinson Curriculum suggests to just skip this. This material was not added by John Saxon, and uh, it was meant for a classroom environment and not for your kids, so just skip it. So, just remember this point, $70 for the book, and uh, I'm going to skip it. Okay, so, on to the lesson. Every lesson starts with a new concept. This one is review of addition. There's a half a page, and here's another page. And here's another page and another half a page before you get into your practice set. You always have a practice set that covers the new concept you just learned. And then you have a problem set. And this is your continual review. So this was John Saxon's big thing, incremental development, which means a short lesson, a short introduction of new material. That's your incremental development. This incremental development on lesson one is three pages. And then your continual review right here. Okay, so this is not a huge problem. We worked, my six-year-old, six and a half, he worked just fine. You know, the big thing about Robinson curriculum is getting into your routine. Get up, do your math, do your writing, and then do your reading. So we did fine until we got to, you know, a good routine going, until we got to lesson 10. And after lesson 10 is an investigation. And this is not the same format as a lesson. It may take you two or three days to finish it. There's not a practice set or problem set necessarily. There are, uh, this one has examples and then a solution. Example two, example three, example four, example five, and it goes up to example nine. So there's really no problem set. There's no way, there's nothing for your child to sit and work and do and check. It's a lot of, hey mommy, what do I do with this? <laughs> okay, so you spend, that really, um, that'll mess up your week. But anyway, eventually you get through it and you go on to lesson 11, which is somewhat normal again. And then you get back into your routine until you get to every 10 lessons. You know what? There's another there's another investigation. So I made it through some of these. Investigation two. How long is that? One, two, three, four pages. Okay. What really got me frustrated was by the time we got to investigation four. Because I had purposed in my heart that my children would not see a calculator until they were 16 years old. I want them to learn the basics, the fundamentals, know how to do all this stuff in their head, in their sleep. Uh, okay, but by the time you get, this is only 40 lessons into the book. And here's investigation four. Activity, using money manipulatives and a calculator to display decimal numbers. Okay, so I had to find a calculator and show my kid how to work it to get the display. It's, it's showing them how decimals display in a calculator. Okay. I really wanted to skip it, but you know what? We got to lesson 41, 42. By, by lesson 44, we, we trashed this book. We just said forget it. Okay, so these next few lessons call back for the material that they learned in investigation four. Okay, so at that point I said, you know what? 
let's just put third edition aside and I found on the internet this 5-4 first edition copyright 1994 that sounds better to me already let's just look at the table of contents and I'll show you the differences that I found just working through the problems okay we're looking at first edition right now notice every lesson looks really short review of edition counting patterns digits place value whatever okay third edition lesson one it has three things it has review of edition edition stories and missing add-ins part one every time you see one of these little bullet points that means extra material or an extra lesson uh, or, or more than one lesson has been combined into a single lesson so here you have like three things and here's two things and here's two and here's two and here's two so let's just go back to the first edition and look what happens when you start working lesson one there's no big warm-up thing that you have to skip there is a speed test. You can skip that if you want to. So, lesson one is one page. It's one and a half pages. Remember, in third edition, it was three pages for the lesson. Okay, and here's your practice set and your problem set. Lesson two is one page. Here's your practice set and your problem set. Okay? continues like this and what I found I did compare some lessons uh, directly with the course from, fir from first edition with the corresponding lesson in third edition and oh I wonder if I could find one let's, not, let's do lesson 49 yes okay so 49 sorry I had this minute ago Okay, in first edition, lines and segments, it's this page, and then the top half of that page for your lesson, it's page and a half, okay? You go over to the corresponding lesson in the third edition, skip your warm-up, you've got a half page on using parentheses, you have a whole page on the associative property, and then you have a page on number lines and segments which was the the whole lesson over here so just going off John Saxon's purpose of incremental development and continuous review this to me seems incremental a little bit of new material and this looks like a lot of new material this is three topics covered in one lesson to me this looks like it was written this is totally intuition or speculation. Looks like it was written to fill time for a teacher in a classroom to cover an hour or 50 minutes or something like that. But for my child to sit in here at age six or seven and work through this five fold book on his own, this book really worked well for me. And you know what? It's lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson with no investigations, no warm ups, no weird things to skip or to mess up your schedule. And uh, he finished the book and we just kept right on going into 6.5 first edition. So, all that being said, I worked over 10 years as an automotive engineer, master's degree, minor in math. I've never worked through a whole math book in my life, and I'm sure I never worked in an entire problem set because my teachers always assign, you know, do the evens or do the odds or whatever. So, no matter what you choose, you're probably going to be fine. What I have found, I though, love this one. and then what I believe, is I'm just sticking with what John Saxon wrote, uh, Math Warrior, the traditional incremental development and continuous review. There's something I did not go over. And that is the problem sets. The problem sets are different. You're going to have to get your own books and sit down and compare those because that would take way too much time. But they're different, and I don't know why. I'll have to uh, find the answer to that one. Anyway, this one, the, the lead author in this has admitted or has stated I don't know if it's like admitting a problem or anything, but he has stated that the reason this book was revised, no content was taken out of this one, the content was added or regrouped or rearranged, and that was done in order to meet state educational guidelines or requirements 
for recent copyrights. And I really don't like state requirements and guidelines. I'm sticking with John Saxon. But here's just information for your Me consideration. Too. I'm sticking with Hope John Saxon you. too. You probably can't go wrong either way. So, best wishes for you and your homeschooling. Thanks for listening. I love John Saxon's books.